So I think we can start now. Um, welcome everyone. Um, and as we've just heard, uh, this is going to be made available to those who are not able to join us now. As I said at the start, um, the course is um, has quite filled up uh, uh, and we are, um, we are soon going to close applications. This is very early for our application cycles, but we are delighted that there's um, uh, you know, such a um, interest in our course uh, and we look forward to everyone joining us um, uh, in, in, in the autumn. Uh, so we just would like to go through some uh, presentations today, giving an overview and highlights of the co course journey and the course content and structures. So without further ado, I'll, I'll, I'll lead on, I'll, I'll, I'll um, give the chance to uh, Dr. Anthony Laverty to introduce the team uh, and, and start us off with our uh, presentations. Thanks, Anthony. Great. Thanks, Henok. And nice to sort of virtually meet everyone as it were. And so I'm Anthony Laverty, senior lecturer here at Imperial and co-director of the MPH with Henock. Um, and so Azim Majid, Professor Majid is the head of the Department of Primary Care and Public Health, and also importantly is the chair of the MPH. And uh, we've got Zainab, who you'll hear from later, Dr. Zainab Muller, who's the teaching fellow and the course organizers holding everything, holding everything together. And then if you don't mind going to the next slide. Um, and then so other people, you know, if you join that you will see and interact with quite a lot. Uh, I've got Beth Solomon, uh, one of our teaching fellows, Jennifer Husband, senior postgraduate tutor, who, you know, among other things, is sort of looking after people's pastoral and you know, their their how they're doing outside of you know how things are going academically. And then Joe and Sylvia. With this sort of administrative glue keeping everything sort of ticking over nicely and do you mind going to the next slide um so this i mean the, the little presentation the webinar about the m about the mph and imperial i mean i'm sure people have done their fair share of googling and reading these things but so you know just to to say imperial is a, a great place to work great place to study and a great place, you know, maybe in particular to do research in public health. And so, you know, some of the, got a few slides that give some of the highlights of that. So every sort of six or seven years or so, the UK has this big process called the Research Excellence Framework. And panels of experts go through every you know universities put forward their research panels of experts go through that and sort of assess broadly how good it is different metrics go into that is it scientifically robust are these questions which we really need an answer to and are they making impacts in the real world and imperial came top in terms of its contribution of its research quality to public health in the last assessment in 2021 and um and also it has sort of the highest proportion of what they call world leading research and so you know really amazing research going on at imperial and one thing to say about the mph here is that we we put a big focus on you know we put a big focus on the research research skills and so partly that's to you know partly that's because that's an important part of public health it's important to understand these research skills you can use them in lots of different areas of life but also because we have this real breadth of research experience and so we try to link up you know the academics and researchers doing incredible research with the people teaching you so there's that's a virtuous a virtuous circle there uh imperials also sort of university of the year last year in the times and the sunday's times and our student experience is is good it is getting better um getting better all the time and so you know students seem to like being here we love teaching them and so you know imperials are a great a great place to come and do your masters i mean i i joined Imperial way back in 2009. So I'm, you know, I've been here for 12 years. It's a great, great place to work, live and study. And then just the last slide from me, I think is the next one. Um, and then, so this, this one, one slide 
just sort of gives a, a flavor of the different research we have going on in the School of Public Health. We um, actually haven't, up, we haven't updated this in a little while, but so, you know, if we did, you would see an even greater sort of breadth of, of things happening, but obviously lots of impactful COVID research has gone on, uh, research, some research I was involved in about uh, tobacco control, smoking bans, in Brazil led to this sort of fall in child death once they implemented comprehensive smoking bans, you know, other things Imperial is doing this world leading work on environmental health, you know, the impacts of air quality and the impacts of green spaces, soft drink consumption, you know, what is what is the impact of that on, on health worldwide. So we're, you know, really going for everything from you know the the genetics to the behavioral factors to the you know country level policies you know what can national governments do all the way to what you know what can we do supranationally things like the un so this real sort of breadth of research is going on imperial and you know that sort of feeds through nicely into the into the mph so i'm going to leave you with Henock, who's going to, I have to, uh, unfortunately, I have to nip off. My daughter has chicken pox. So that's um, another uh, pu public health infectious disease related point sort of impinging on my life. But I leave you at the sort of capable hands of Henock and Zainab and hope to see some of you in October. Thank you so much, uh, Anthony. And thank you for being here with us under these circumstances. Uh, so great. Thank you. See you later. And, um, and yeah, so we can, and now we will um, start going into, um, you know, introducing the course specifically. Um, so the key aspects of uh, the end page at Imperial is that you've seen this already. We suspect a number of you are already offer holders. So it's a full-time course. It's not just, um, we've got two modules which are um, uh, delivered by the Imperial Business School. Um, Mainly it's going to be at St. Mary's, but part of the year we might be going into our new School of Public Health building, which has all these high-tech, futuristic, um, you know, um, facilities. Um, we're very excited uh, to be moving in there, uh, but it might be uh, from the second term that we do that. Um, but we will continue to collaborate with the Imperial Business School, uh, who will run the health economics and um, uh, health policy systems and financing module for us. So you will have a chance to be uh, at the business school, uh, which is uh, uh, also a fantastic department uh, for part of um, the days. Um, so we, our candidates come from a health background, medicine back, background, biomedical background, but also social sciences management from different backgrounds. As you know, public health has a wide broad application and basis and for, for the discipline. So we are um, quite open-minded. We just want to make sure that students demonstrate real interests, applicants demonstrate real interests that are backed up by, um, by actual um, things that they have done in their careers, are up for the quantitatively focused um, uh, aim page that we run. We have different things to en ensure that. Uh, but it looks to me like you, most of you have gone through the application process um, uh, by now, probably. Um, so you would um, you'd know these things. Uh, so the thing is, we are open for people to come from varied backgrounds, but we have stop gaps to make sure that you would be thriving and maximizing the opportunities provided by our course. Uh, next slide, please. Right. So. Please make sure to visit the Global Master of Public Health course, which is a fully online part-time uh, course, which is a distance uh, learning course, but essentially the same as uh, the M page. A lot of us who lead modules on the Master of Public Health course, our course have developed um, the, the specializations for the M page. It's fully, fully online, that's the only difference. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about our hybrid model of course delivery on the on-campus module as well. So there's a lot of commonality between the online course and the, um, uh, the on-campus MPH course. 
The distinction is that you would, you would not need to travel to London to undertake the Global Master of uh, Public Health online course. It's delivered depending on your choice. You could, you could get in at the PG cert, PG certificate level, PG diploma, or the full GMPH course. And this could take you anywhere uh, from two to three years. Um, so it's quite flexible in that manner, but the course content and the level and quality of our offerings are literally the same course. It's the same module leaders, it's the same module team, it's equally intensive, it's no less intensive for being online. It's all of us lead uh, specializations. I lead um, the research uh, specialization on the online course and I call it um, the research uh, methods uh, module on, on campus. Zainab does the same with her modules uh, on campus and online and all our academics. Um, so please consider that as well, if that might fit um, your circumstances better. Um, so our approach to uh, postgraduate teaching at the School of Public Health um, is, um, is, is takes on board a lot of contemporary pedagogical uh, theories concepts and approaches, best practice. We have a mix of online and blended delivery. So essentially by blended delivery, what we mean uh, is that we expect students to do part of the work before coming into class. So we've, we've, we've developed all these fantastic materials, which are part of our online Global Master of Public Health course, which we would require you to uh, to, um, uh, to, to undertake before coming into class, this could be recorded lectures, assigned pre-reading materials, ETVTs, which engage you in actually um, testing your, uh, the knowledge of GAND and practically um, displaying your skills before coming into class. And the, the in-class sessions are modeled around interactive things that build on the pre-reading that you've already had. Um, this is, um, Contemporarily, this is proven uh, to enhance student learning and, and to build skills, not just um, you know, rote learning of basic knowledge. Um, so, we, um, so, so we have um, three terms. Um, so when you come in the autumn, uh, we start with uh, four uh, core and compulsory modules. Um, we have um, a, a range of elective modules in the second term. And then we have a substantive time that's dedicated to your uh, dissertation project at the end in the third term. We've got four months dedicated for your uh, summer projects, which um, I think are really um, fully um, dedicated for your project, which distinguishes our, our course from uh, a lot of courses out there. Um, so the objectives are around provide, providing a comprehensive introduction into key public health topics, which are health promotion, health protection, health behavior, health policy, health economics and financing, as well as offering cutting edge knowledge and skills based in the key principles and methods of public health. Towards this end, we have what we call the foundations of public health practice module, which is one of our core modules in the first term, but a lot of our other modules will also be addressing these uh, key perspectives. We have a focus in, on, on quantitative analytical skills for public health. So our epidemiology and biostatistics modules are quite involved and are practice-based. So it's not just teaching you the concepts, but we require you to engage actively in analyzing uh, demo data sets um, in, in different practical um, uh, learning tutorial groups. Uh, we try and provide a creative and supportive learning environment, and this is displayed through the, the range of assessments we've put together. So our assessments are not just simply exams. There are a few exams, but a lot of them are things that require you to work in groups to um, come out with creative solutions to public health problems, uh, to creatively adapt different research and analytical uh, skills in the kind of uh, coursework that we engage you in. Uh, so the course structure, as I said, is divided into three terms. Each term, um, the first and second term, run for 10 weeks. 
But as I said, the third term runs for a whole four months between May and end of August. Um, so the two terms um, are, are, um, provide you with insights into um, uh, the, the, the core compulsory and optional modules that we have curated. So in terms of that, the first term has um, is, is what we call, it, it is made up of our long, big modules. So the principles and methods of epidemiology, introduction to statistical thinking and data analysis, research methods, and the foundations of public health practice. So these are all, so principles of epi and foundations of public health practice are our core modules. In order to pass on the course, you have to pass the assessments for these modules because we think these are absolutely fundamental for a public health qualification. The others are also quite compulsory, so hence you would have to, there's no option of not doing these modules, which are statistics and the module that I call it, um, which is research methods. So this run for 10 weeks and the way we organize the week for our students is that um, you know, each week is dedicated for a single module. So on Monday, you come in and you undertake statistics. Tuesdays is dedicated to epidemiology. Thursdays is research methods and Fridays foundations of public health practice. On Wednesday afternoons, uh, students are free to engage in extracurricular activities across the college. In the mornings, we encourage you to engage with um, our online material on what we call the disease masterclass. So this is a fully fledged specialization on the online module, but for us on the on-campus module, you can, you can um, uh, get accreditation uh, by doing the uh, short course, which is online and we facilitate uh, for you to undertake that. We also engage you in other extracurricular seminars um, that are offered to us from across the departments. So that's going to be your first step. So the second term, very busy schedule that you see here, uh, but for each student, what's going to happen is that you're going to have um, health economics, um, which is on Wednesday mornings at the business school, which is compulsory for everyone runs over the 10 weeks of the term two. Um, but the, uh, all the rest is what we call the short-term modules. The short-term modules are elective optionals and depending on your choices around these short elective modules, you qualify for any number of the streams which are specified uh, at the bottom. Uh, so you could just decide to be, um, to go away with an MPH and, and the general MPH qualification. So you could um, choose any of the streams, any of the uh, uh, modules designated to any streams without any stream, particular stream designation, or you could uh, choose to, uh, uh, to take the modules designated for health promotion and service improvement or global health stream, environmental health stream, quantitative method stream, health policy and system stream, and infectious diseases stream. So in order to qualify for any of these streams, all you need to do at the moment is choose two qualifying modules. You still have the option to choose additional three modules, which you can uh, choose and mix from the other, uh, from the other streams. So, um, so it's a choice. Basically, if you uh, choose and, and decide to be uh, associated, um, uh, linked up with a particular stream, it just means that you go away with an M page, but with a qualification on your diploma that you've graduated with a concentration on a part with a particular um, uh, stream. Um, so we've got quite a choice, quite a choice, and it's um, it's um, it's uh, at times becomes um, slightly tricky for our students to choose from all these offerings, but the choices are quite supported. The module leaders and the stream leaders will come and present um, their um, um, their respective modules and try to sway you uh, to choose um, their uh, respective modules. So it's it's quite um, supported, um, and we will um, have. Um, adequate introduction into the process and, and the content of these modules. 
Next slide, please. Okay. So with that, we come to the term three. So we feel that after going through the core compulsory and elective modules, you are in good state to undertake um, a fairly original piece of research that is laid by yourself. Um, so the uh, period from May to end of August is entirely dedicated to your research project. So our um, uh, course, as Anthony was saying earlier, may, puts a lot of emphasis on the analytical and research skills that we would like to impart to our students. Um, and this is, um, this is manifested in the level of importance we attach to the dissertation process. Every year we produce over a hundred research proposals um, from across the School of Public Health. And this is coming from academics that work um, uh, across the different uh, departments at um, Imperial, uh, the uh, epidemiology and biostatistics department, the primary care and public health department, the infectious diseases epidemiology department, the aging um, research unit, the um, and the George uh, Institute, who are very active in global health research across the world, the Environmental Research Group, and um, and a lot of different um, research groups. So they um, um, they contribute to this process. So this gives you an opportunity to engage and involve in some of the cutting edge research that Imperial undertakes. Um, so we make those proposals available to you all. We ask you to submit your uh, three top choices. And as, um, as it happens, students have just, um, the current students have just submitted their choices um, and the selection process is about to begin. So the supervisors then have to undertake interviews with the students who have selected their, um, their, their projects and, and select the students who will be working with them during the summer. So you're going to be part of this very intensive um, um, uh, dedicated um, a research um, summer uh, project, um, uh, which will be led by you, but also uh, closely supported by designated supervisors. So you'll be designated two supervisors, primary and secondary supervisors. At times your supervisors could come from outside um, uh, Imperial, uh, but it's a well curated, um, closely followed up um, process you'll undertake. One, Final thing is you could also propose your own research project. So alongside this, we encourage our students to, propo to propose their, your own um, research um, ideas as well. Um, so our assessments are quite varied, very rich mix of different types of assessments. Um, so uh, it could be the academic essays and coursework, group works and presentations, video blogs about specific things, uh, reflective statements, simulations such as outbreak um, um, uh, 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 analysis and assessments, critical reviews, but all of these and exams actually, we've got quite a, uh, just a few, I think two or three right now, um, uh, invigilated exams, but all of these are supported by detailed formative exercises that support you to do well in your final assessments. All of these details are, are detailed in the module handbooks. If you've not got, if you've not got access to our um, current uh, handbook, uh, course handbook, please do let us know um, and we can share that. But I think that should be available through the web pages, um, but, also, and, but also specific handbooks for each module that will be made available to you when you join the course. And we, we map out the course as the um, assessment schedule into one document so that you can anticipate um, the different assessments that will be coming up. Um, as Anthony indicated, there's um, uh, well-considered pastoral care and support to look after students' well-being. You'll be assigned personal tutors, but also uh, 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 Dr. Jenny Husband, who is our um, uh, senior postgraduate tutor, will, will coordinate this and, and will be is very much accessible to students who may have um, different um, learning or, or disability related uh, concerns. Um, so, so we, we and then you'll have a, a range of academic support from module leaders to 
course directors, uh, Zainab as the course uh, organizer, the teaching team, the admin team are always there um, to support you in your uh, journey with us. Um, we've got a range of extracurricular engagements. As I mentioned, the disease masterclass is something we encourage you to undertake in the first term, because for, especially for those of you who come to our course with little medical or biomedical background, that is an insight into the etiology, epidemiology, and uh, of, of different diseases, a range of infectious and non-communicable diseases, and also um, control and, and response um, strategies. We encourage students to organize student-led seminars. We make, we are increasingly making the department seminars accessible to our students, but also beyond our department, the graduate school organizes fantastic seminars and workshops around what we call soft skills um, to, to improve your employability, your professional skills, writing skills, CV, um, uh, and, and then interviewing skills and a range of other things that we encourage you to be part of. Mm, you all might know by now that um, we have a WHO collaborating center at the School of Public Health, which organizes annual visits to um, uh, uh, institutions, um, global health institutions in Geneva. So we haven't been able, we hadn't been able to hold this in person for the last three years because of COVID, but this year, we're very happy to announce that the in-person visits are back on track. Um, but, um, but as it happens with this, um, you know, we can't take everyone to Geneva. Every year we could take 30 to 35 uh, students. Um, so uh, we do a selection process. Usually um, we uh, just select by um, through a lottery. Um, the students who could go, but we make sure that a number of the seminars that are held in Geneva outside of the in-person uh, visits are transmitted uh, simultaneously to the students who remain behind. So you will be part of some of that experience. So as you can see here, uh, Professor Salman Rawaf um, is our um, head of the WHO Collaborating Center, uh, who is very key in organizing this. Um, but uh, we get some very senior people at the World Health Organization and other agencies joining us for our seminar. So this is Sir David Navarro, who's special advisor on COVID to the uh, WHO uh, Director uh, General, uh, who was speaking to our students, I think, a couple of years back. So I think this is where I pass it on to Zainab. Thank you. Thanks, Anak. Thank you. That was very comprehensive. Um, so yeah, I'll just talk a little bit more about the dissertation journey. Henek's already mentioned a little bit about it. Um, so click on the slide. Uh, there we go. Um, yeah, so term one really, um, that's where the process sort of starts, the preparation for the dissertation. So there's a real focus on the methodology, as Henek said, on uh, the epidemiological methodology, statistical methodology, and in the research methods module, you'll go through the whole research cycle all the different study designs, all the different ways in which you can con conduct research and with a particular focus on developing a research question which you can actually take forward um, into your final research project if you want to. So for those of you that have already been offered a place, you can already start looking at the different research groups at Imperial if you have a particular interest and think about developing a research question because you'll be really supported in doing that from term one in the research methods module. Um, in term two, um, we submit a huge amount of pro uh, projects, as Henek said, all from all the research groups across the School of Public Health um, doing cutting edge research. Um, each research group submits a minimum of one research project, many submit a lot more. And um, you submit your top three choices from the ones that we release, and then supervisors will select the student that they want, either by asking you for your CV or by interviewing you. Um, and then if you don't secure a project in the first round, we have a second round where we release the projects that were not selected in the first round and also new projects. Um, so most people are always really happy with their 
venture projects because um, they're all really, really interesting and really good, um, you know, in cutting edge topics. So in term three, once you've sec secured your project, you begin around May. And then in June, you have a check-in presentation um, to for us to check your progress and see how you're progressing and see how best to support you. So it's a very well-supported process across the four months. Whilst you're doing your research project, we have regular uh, summer support sessions, which support with methodology. So um, statistical support, analytical support, um, you know, how to do a systematic review. Um, we have like revision sessions for the content that you've covered in term one and term two. Um, and then at the end, you submit a 10,000 word um, dissertation, written dissertation project. And then after that, you have a viva with two academics. Um, where you present your research and then that viva is worth another 10% of your total mark of the dissertation. So it's a really comprehensive um, opportunity for you to actually apply everything that you've learned on the course and, and, you know, almost do like an internship in research with a real world research group and really embed yourself within a research group. Um, so here's our, some examples of past projects. And as you can see, there's a real wide range of study designs ranging from systematic reviews, primary data collection, um, data analysis using cohort and trial data. But also there's a real variation in all the different topics reflecting all the different research groups at Imperial. So projects on food environment and dietary intake, um, projects looking at you know, health innovation, tobacco controlled policies, and then lots of projects, quite a few projects looking at primary data collection. Um, on the MPH as well, a lot, um, quite a few qualitative projects, not just quantitative. And then um, lots of the research groups have access to a lot of cohort data, a lot of survey data, a lot of trial data. And here you can see this has been used to investigate smoking. Um, and obviously, in the last few years, we've had quite a lot of projects related to COVID-19, but also um, cognition, cognitive decline, uh, green space, respiratory disease. So really, I think if there's any topic that you're interested in, you can have a look um, at the research groups and most likely there'll be someone investigating the topic that you're interested in. And many of these projects um, do go on to make it to publication. So this is just an example of some that have been published. So this one in plus one is looking at access to primary care and visits to emergency departments in England. It was a cross-sectional um, study. And this one looking at blood pressure, hypertension and sudden risk of sudden cardiac, uh, cardiac death, which was a systematic review and meta-analysis of cohort studies was published in the European Journal of Epidemiology. And then you've got a review here published in the Cochrane Library, which was um, looking at community based interventions for improving mental health in refugee children and adolescents. And then here you've got one in the Journal of Adolescent Health, looking at the effects of exposure to tobacco and electronic cig cigarette advertisements on tobacco use. And this was using survey data. And then finally, you've got a qualitative study um, published in Reproductive Health, and this is one of yours, Henex, uh, Male Involvement in Reproductive, Maternal, Newborn and Child Health. So uh, many students do continue to collaborate with supervisors and publish the research after they've finished their research project. So that's something to keep in mind if you're interested in doing that. Um, so moving on from the dissertation, project then just thinking about what students do after they finish the MPH and really there's such a huge range of roles um, that you can go on to after the MPH so this this um, just shows uh, roles that you know and this just shows the figures until 2018 and um, you can also have a look on uh, LinkedIn and other platforms to see what people are doing but you can see the spread here people go on to be a research fellow um, public health registrar, management consultant, um, people do analytical roles or be a research associate or advisor or lecturer. And employers are really varied as well. Higher education, NHS consultancy, the Department of Health, uh, policy think tanks, um, health production and promotion um, 
uh, organizations and then startups or uh, non-government organizations. So a really, really wide range of um, careers and employers. And there's a lot of career support at Imperial. Internally, we invite alumni to come in and give talks, but the graduate school at Imperial is really, really good and um, provides so many different services and talks um, and also um, the Imperial Career Service, which is also separate to the graduate professional development. On LinkedIn, you can join the SPH uh, Masters alumni group and there'll be uh, lots of alumni there so you can see what they're doing uh, doing now and also network with them. So please do have a look on LinkedIn. If you can't find that, um, you can email us uh, if you want to join. So um, the Imperial Career Service, as I said, is um, really good and offer a lot of support. So we would really recommend taking advantage of that if you join. They do one-to-one -one appointments where you can, you know, revise your CV. They do lots of um, other courses that you can do alongside your master's so that you can be fully prepared to go to work. This is just an example um, of one of the courses that they offer, which is called Attributes and Aspirations. And, and they do like courses on various different topics, including time management and career planning and applications, um, how to network. And things like that so you know do take a look at that as well um and then finally just to finish some books suggestions that you might want to read over the summer um and then if you have any queries please do just email us and um yeah there should be more information on the website as well Great, thanks so much, Zainab. Um, uh, and I think we can um, we can answer any questions now. There are quite a few questions on um, um, scholarships. So, are you able just to outline the, the deadlines and and the, uh, the the process for scholarship applications? Great, thank you, Jack. Um, I think the deadlines students can find the specific deadlines on the web pages. This should be easily accessible if they go to the MPH application page. We've got two types of um, uh, uh, scholarships. Uh, the SPH scholarship, uh, which um, covers about 10,000 pounds, if I'm correct. Um, uh, if, and, and also there's the faculty, the Dean's faculty scholarship, which um, uh, which also um, uh, covers around, um, I think that covers the home student, the home student fee and some living assistance support that's around 13,000 pounds. But please um, have a look at, uh, it's all detailed online. Please have a look at the details on the, on the web page. That would be the most uh, reliable uh, path. Um, but also a lot of our students come having access to scholarships uh, from their countries in terms of international scholarships like the British Commonwealth scholarship, the Shevning scholarship scheme. So it's not just the few scholarships that we have within the department, but other um, scholarship schemes, which can be even more generous uh, than ours uh, covering international student fees, as well as living maintenance um, expenses. Okay, I can see that Isaac in the in the in the webinar has their hand up. Um, so if I just allow them to talk, they should be able. We should be able to. Isaac, do you want to unmute and see if you can ask a question? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um. Just a quick question. So, um, I am a, a senior clinical physiologist. I specialize in respiratory and sleep medicine. I'm just really interested in doing the course, but it's because I'm full time in. Uh, employee as well if i opt for the online how flexible is it that will i be still able to work full time and and uh, do the course and yes do you want to say more isaac no no that's fine yeah that's it thanks okay great thank you isaac um yes i'm one of the uh, specialization leads as i said earlier on the online um, uh, course as well, the GMPH, it's actually uh, structured to work around full-time employees. 
So the vast majority of our students on the GM page are full-time employees in different leadership positions, in different keyboard positions like yourself, clinical medicine or um, other areas of work. Uh, and, and that's why it's part-time. It's that the load and content is similar to the GM page, but it's stretched out to two years, depending on your availability to undertake the course or even three years. So you've got the option to complete the GMPH over two years or even over a longer period, which is the three-year option. Uh, so it absolutely caters for um, busy professionals uh, like yourself. Thank you, thank you. That was really helpful. That's, that's exactly what I, um, I needed to hear. Thank you. Perfect, thank you, Isaac. I think the other main question is just about sort of deadlines and, and timeframes. So are there any specific deadlines or I know you said that applications are getting filled quite quickly. Yes, uh, Jack, that is correct. Um, for this round, um, uh, we are going to close applications very, very soon. Um, we've already received um, a huge number of applications and people have confirmed um, their spaces. We've just got a few spaces left and we're just managing those. So we will be in the next, in the next week or so, we're going to be closing um, applications uh, for this round. But, but um, other times, our application window uh, opens um, beginning of uh, November, um, around then, and then it runs over the year. And as Sylvia has been answering in the questions, we encourage all uh, applicants to get their applications as early as possible. But we don't have um, deadlines per se, but for our course, which starts in October, usually usually um, by May, uh, we kind of close um, our, our application windows. Great, I think that's all the questions that I can see. So unless anybody else wants to ask anything quickly, I think I think we're all we're all done. Uh, great. Just just to say though, um, Jack, um, I think just to clarify um, from our presentations, I know we emphasized quantitative methods. I know I am aware there are going to be some applicants who've already got offers and are participating here. Just to clarify um, to that effect. We covered the whole swath and, and broad spectrum of topics covered within the discipline of, um, uh, of public health, which is quite a broad uh, discipline with, um, with varied applications um, in research and, um, and, and, health and, and policy, public policy and other um, areas of work. So we do cater for different interests. That's why we've got quite a busy schedule in the second term. For example, so, so we do emphasize quantitative methods, but we also cover qualitative methods in our course offering. Uh, I call it um, the research methods module. So we do uh, focus on across the different methodological approaches, quantitative, qualitative, and mixed methods. And some of our um, modules are also um, more inclined towards the qualitative and social science perspectives. Others will clearly be more focused on the quantitative end of the spectrum. So you will have all those choices, but given the historical focus on quantitative method at Imperial, and also given the strength of, uh, say for instance, our Department for Infectious Disease Epidemiology, we do have a very a strong, uh, we do offer a very strong basis for quantitative methods. Uh, so that would be uh, what I would like to clarify. So we, we make sure that you've got, we don't, um, we don't require that you've undertaken statistics or epidemiology beforehand, but we want to make sure that you've got the numerical skills to also capitalize on the kind of course that, um, that we offer here. Uh, that, that's from my side. Maybe, Zainab, uh, if you have any other thing you'd like to unpack more. No, I think you've covered it, yeah. There's a good variety of um, topics and 
quantitative and qualitative offered so people can pick and choose according to what what they prefer so yeah yes there's a hand yeah I, i'll just i'll just allow isaac to talk again i think isaac do you have another question yeah, just a, just a quick one. Um, so I'm more interested in the health promotion and service improvements um, and uh, looking at understanding more about health systems and health policies. Uh, with the course, um, how much of this is covered in the course? That's, I guess that's my question. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of focus on quality improvement, health systems. Um, we've got... So, uh, uh, Isaac, I, I gather you're interested in the online course, so, um, so I'll highlight what we have on the GM page to that effect. Um, so we've got the quality improvement in healthcare specialization at a specialization level. Uh, so we've got um, the, um, as it, so they're now called ARC, uh, there's this collaboration for translation of um, evidence to service improvement in the UK. So the Northwest London group are the ones who are running our, our uh, module on quality improvement for healthcare actually. So they actually bring in a lot of their research and their active projects across London, improving um, healthcare um, into the classroom essentially. So they run our module on campus, but also they run a whole specialization on the GM page. But also other modules have health system focus. We've got the health systems development module. We've got the health policy and um, systems and financing um, module, um, even though that one might not have a specialization online, but, um, but the health systems development is, um, is, um, is common to both the global health to the GM page and the M page uh, courses. So there's ample, ample focus on health policy systems and quality improvement in, in healthcare. Okay, I think that's everything. Right, fantastic. Thank you everyone uh, for coming and we look forward to seeing you all uh, in October in our course, uh, who uh, those of you are going to be joining us. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.